All right. So for today's end top live, we're going to be talking about conformal jigs, fixtures, and soft jaws. Um, let's start off with why that would be important. So with topology and generative design in general, we can create these geometries that are very organic, uh, aesthetically pleasing, but very complex. And so when we need to say machine a face or any faces for any particular reason to meet tolerancing um, for connection points or anything like that, it poses a very uh, large problem with how do I actually clamp this in a vise or in any way so that I can actually machine these. Because if you walk down to the machine shop with this part and say, hey, machine it, they're gonna look at you and uh, ask you to leave. Uh, it's not an easy task. Uh, so to make that easier with NTOP, we have this capability through our Booleans to create these conformal jigs, fixtures or soft jaws. Uh, and what would that look like? As an example, if I put my block here, I have a compound block that I made here, as you can see named conformal jig. And if I go ahead and look inside of there, this is conformal to that geometry. So it would provide a good grip on the part when paired with one on uh, either the opposite side or anything like that. I just have one in this example to show you, but you'll notice it's also removable. So there's nothing blocking this from being taken off once it's clamped together, it would actually be uh, totally usable in that sense. So let's take a look at how NTOP is able to create these geometries to solve the problem of the difficulties of machining these geometries. So to take a quick look, let's go into the actual compound block itself. There's nothing at, on the screen at this moment, but if we take a look, there's a couple inputs here, initial part, initial mold, projection plane and feature size. And I'm gonna switch files in just a second, but you can see all the steps in this compound block, they're completely um, spelled out. They have comments to tell you exactly what's happening and then you end up with your final part. So let's take a look at what is actually happening in here. This is the exact same file. I just actually brought in uh, a CAD body and converted it to an implicit so we can actually visualize, visualize each step along the way. So let's look at our initial part, turn off our mold there, we turn our initial mold and check it out. So the way this compound block works is we take our geometry and this time it's uh, more basic, but we'll look at a more complex one in just a minute where we take our geometry and we create a, an initial mold as the input is called where it's intersecting that geometry. And then what it does is takes that geometry, actually flips it 180 degrees and creates support volumes based off of that. And so instead of using the support volume block that we have to actually create uh, supports for printing, we're gonna use those supports, convert them to implicit, flip them back in a little bit different manner. And then we use those support volumes that we created to subtract away this one off to subtract away um, from the remaining material. So if we initially intersect just our initial part, we see we get this long ribbon of material down into that hole. And if we wanted to remove that, it wouldn't remove, it'd be stuck. Now, that's not something that would make this usable. So we have a second step here where we use those supports that we created here to remove that excess uh, material out of the way to make this part removable. And then with just a little final step, we have our final mold. So this workflow isn't too crazy or too difficult. All it asks for is your initial part, which is gonna be your complex geometry, your initial mold, uh, the plane in which direction you want to remove your part so that it's removable in that direction. So in this case, it's uh, horizontal in this, this direction here. And that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's another uh, way to use that support region that we can generate. And it, I thought it was pretty interesting. I wanted to show that to you guys. So what does that look like on a very complex part? Well, if we come to, and let's take a look at just the part in general, if we come to this uh, bracket, where we call this our automotive bracket, where this is a very, very complex geometry that you're not gonna be able to clamp down normally and do any machining. So say each of these interfaces, and we have quite a few, uh, would all need to be machined just to make their tolerances for their connection points. 
that's going to pose an issue. And with this compound block, we can pretty easily create some way to clamp this part so that we could actually get at the faces we need to. And I, you could put these in any direction and orientation to make these faces head, head straight up like this if you wanted. You just have to rotate your blocks and make a new uh, conformal jig. It'd be just that easy. And this really solves the problem. So let's take a look inside this one here. You can see how complex the topology is in here where you're gonna actually need that contact. And this part still is removable so that even after your machining, once you put it on, you can still get it off. So this workflow solves that problem of, you know, I created this, great. Um, and then I, I manufactured it, I 3D printed it, awesome. But what do I do for post-processing? This is almost impossible. Well, this can solve that problem for you uh, in a nice, easy, single block that we have as a compound block here. Uh, and that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Nice, short, to the point, to show you this really awesome application that we have here that is those conformal jigs, uh, fixtures, and soft jaws. So please, uh, any questions, ask away. If you wanna see anything else I'm, or anything more about this or talk about it in any way, please go ahead, ask away. Um, in the meantime, uh, while we, while I let any questions filter in, we do these end up lives every Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, at 11. So if you want to, if you're on YouTube, because we're also streaming this live to YouTube, you can always hit the subscribe button and uh, then you'll be able to see all our stuff. Or if you want notifications, you can hit the, the notification icon. Or if you want to uh, check us out on Zoom, we send out the email with the, the way to uh, get to the Zoom meeting as well. So please continue to join us. We love doing these and we hope you find them super useful. Um, but yeah, this is what uh, I have for you guys today in conformal jigs and fixtures, which really solves a large problem in the industry today. All right, someone asked if I could back up to the actual block here. All right, so what the compound block does is it takes our initial part, which is here. Let me turn this guy off. It flips it 180, just like that. And then it creates this support region. And it does this so it captures the correct <laughs> support region there. And then it turns those support regions into an end top or sorry, into an implicit body, rotates them back around and uses those to take away any of this excess that would make this non-removable. So in this case, once we subtract that away, you get rid of that pillar there. I would have made this a non-removable uh, jig fixture or soft draw, whichever you end up designing. So we use those support regions as um, a way to create this into a removable mold in a way. All right, I'll hang out another uh, minute or so and see if any other questions filter on in. Um, let me switch back to here and show you guys my more complex one that I really enjoy looking at. I think it's a pretty awesome part. It looks like uh, no more questions are coming through. Uh, as I mentioned, if you want to see more of these, go to our website and to our videos. We have all of our past ones up on the, the website. And we do these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you can always check out the future ones. Uh, thank you guys for joining today. I appreciate you coming out to support us. And we hope to see you soon.